I like to say good afternoon to everyone. It's a blessing to be here today, be on this side of life, and to be able to have this opportunity to speak to you all today, uh, the day that the Lord has prepared for us. Uh, I want to thank everyone, especially thank Brother Robert Smith. That was actually an excellent song to lead into today's message. I want to thank all the brothers who have uh, served us up until this point in the service. Uh, this service is a worship service we are offering to God. Uh, I want to thank the members, the members of Highland Heights uh, Church of Christ for being on the call this afternoon. Also, the members of the Church of Christ in general. Uh, I know we have a wide reach with our conference ability. I want to thank you all for joining us on a week-in, week-out basis. Uh, it's much, much appreciated. Uh, also, the very important people of the call is our visitors. So I definitely want to uh, give the visitors their due respect and thank them for taking their time out of uh, the day to worship with us in spirit and in truth uh, to God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to uh, thank you for uh, being with us. Because um, at the end of the day, you know, all we have is ourselves. You know, we have our body, our mind, our thoughts, our conscience. We have ourselves. You know, that's accountability. And accountability or the fact or condition of being accountable, this responsibility that we have, you know, accountability refers to an obligation uh, or willingness to accept, to accept responsibility for one's actions. When individuals are accountable, they understand and accept the consequences of their actions for the areas uh, in which they uh, assume the responsibility in. You know, account accountability is not subjective or viewed objectively, but accountability is evident. It's noticeable. You know, and why is this why is this important? Why is it important to be accountable? The accountability eliminates the time and effort you spend on distracting activities and, and other unproductive behavior. You know, when you make people when you hold people and have them uh, accountable for their actions, you're effectively teaching them to value their work. And when this is done right, accountability can increase, you know, team members to skills and their confidence, which is very important, especially to the church, as we are members collected. Accountability is, is, is really not to be confused with responsibility. See, we are uh, responsible for things, but we are accountable to people. The things and the routines that we set ourselves or we, or we have in our lives, those are responsibilities, and these responsibilities are usually tactical in the nature, you know, I'll have a report in by 3 o'clock, or I'll do this by a certain time. I'll pay a bill by the 5th, you know, which is very necessary when managing and maintaining our daily lives. But accountability, in this, in this sense, or having a commitment relationship with other people rather than this tactical relationship. You know, accountability is, you know, hey, if you ever need me, I'll be there for you. Or, or you know, you know you're better than that, but we'll get through it together. The accountability is the parable of the Good Samaritan. We're not going to go there today, but 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 the parable of the Good Samaritan where the priest, knowing the word of God, and and the Levite also knowing the word of God, but it was this outsider, the Samaritan, who was not uh, within, in, within the Jewish faith at the time, uh, considered considered an outside person who who was accountable. In the scripture, but as the scripture shows it, they show compassion. See, unlike responsibility, which is subjective and can be misconstrued given a certain context, the accountability centers our moral compass and is a direct reflection of God's light that's in each and one of us. Accountability is not a skill set. Accountability is a mindset. Accountability it's not responsibility and should not be considered as such because responsibility is an ongoing duty to complete a task at hand, whereas accountability is what happens after the situation occurs. It is how a person responds and takes ownership of the result of the task, which leads me to the lesson this evening. In Genesis chapter 2, yeah, we're going to go back to Genesis. In Genesis chapter 2, 
in verse number seven. It says, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. In Job, the book of Job, chapter one, book of Job, chapter one, verse 21, and said, naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked I shall return hither. The Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed is the name of the Lord. See, life, life is precious. Life is something precious that we have. Amen. And it's the Lord who giveth and who takes this life away. So it is our duty, our responsibility to be accountable for what God blesses us with. Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Isaiah, the 55th chapter. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways saith the Lord. But I want to remind us all that we must give account for our lives, our precious lives. Yeah. We must give account with the time that he has blessed us with. Yeah. There's no way around it. We must give an account for what he's blessed us with. In Romans, Romans, the sixth chapter, the Paul was teaching them, know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. See, whether, whether or not we want to have this good life or this bad life, this, these righteous ways or these wicked ways, we will all have to give an account. Later on in that chapter, uh, well, in the book of Romans, later on in the book of Romans in chapter 14, picking up the 14, and we'll spend a majority of our time in it, uh, there this evening to uh, highlight a couple of points I thought Paul was bringing um, out in the, in the lesson. Um, in verse 12, starting in verse 12, he says, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow unto me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. And I want to pause here for a moment. I want to pause here for a moment. I don't want to spend too much time this evening going on, on mental and health, though uh, this is not to excuse anyone's behavior by any, by any means of the imagination, but I like to acknowledge, you know, the taking care of your mental health. This is, this is uh, you know, very important. Uh, depression, domestic violence, you know, suicide in general, but suicides in youth particularly has spiked at an alarming rate. And, uh, you know, especially in it, during these pandemic times, you know, people are kind of stuck with their, their own thoughts and their own, uh, you know. Uh, my mother always told me, uh, out of mind can be a devil workshop. You know, but this is very important. Depression is a real thing, uh, and it affects a large number of people. You know, depression is a mood disorder that causes persistent feeling of sadness, a loss of interest, you know, uh, also uh, major depressive disorders or clinical depression. It affects how you feel, how you think and behave and can lead to a variety of emotions and uh, physical problems. You may have trouble doing, you know, day-to-day -day things and, and normal activities, and sometimes you may, you may feel as if life was, isn't really worth living. And, and, I sincerely pray for these individuals because uh, if you have experienced depression or being bipolar, you can, it can have this uh, profound impact on your life, right, relationships, and just dealings with other people. Now, having said, having said that, um, especially to the members of the church, the body of Christ, uh, let's look in Colossians. Let's look in Colossians real quick. Um, Paul was teaching to uh, people in Colossians, and... Um, with the, the, the Colossians, um, chapter 3, chapter 3, starting at verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, as the, you say, put on, therefore, it's something you got to put on. It's something you have to put on. Paul was telling you, you got to put on something as an elect. It's funny, we're in a political year. He said, as the elect of God. That's kind of special when a God elects you. He said, put on as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. I need you to put these things on. Clothe yourself with these things. He says, forbearing one another. That's something we're going to have to do, forbearing one another. 
and in conjunction with forbearing one another, forgiving one another. And if any man have a quarrel, this quarrel is an argument, a fight, a dispute against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. So we have to put these things on to get to this outcome. And I'd like to share this at this time. Uh, Christ would have said, it, uh, uh, well, as, as the scripture teaches, Christ said, it's woe unto you. I'm just going to say be careful. You know, be careful of who and what, you know, you are aligning yourselves with. We are aligning ourselves with. Be very, very careful, careful, especially in this, in this hyperbolic political year, be very careful. Um, I'll be the first to tell you this, you know, I, and I'll spend even less time on politics than I, I, I did on mental health, but both sides have their share of evil doings. Whatever side you cross on, both sides have their evil doings. And when it comes to God, there is no lesser of two evils. So just, you know, be careful. And I put this there, I put that plug there because um, as a young man growing in the church and aspiring to lead my family, uh, you know, my future family in the church, you know, it becomes very disheartening to see members of the body become divided uh, by political parties, by race relations, and just any other device Satan is uh, using to keep us divided. You know, no one's life is the same. We all have various walks and situations that are all unique to us. And these beliefs make you view and vote and support for whoever you support. That's fine. That, that is not what this is about. I'm talking about these, these ensuing arguments, these confrontational debates, the derogatory comments, the hateful language. You know, the fact that after all the speak boxing and all the chest pumping, you know, go to social media and all the, you know, prove my point that I got you moment. After all the smoke clears, people can care less if the other one was saved or not. And brothers and sisters, I'm here tonight to say that that should not be so. That should not be so. Not as Christians, not as walkers of the faith. If we go back to Romans, if we go back to Romans, the 14th chapter, pick it up in verse 15, and Paul tells him, he say, if thy brother is grieved without meat, and in, 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 in this context, they was, they was having a dispute of, uh, you know, eating meat without meat or, you know, abstaining from it, and, you know, the, the teachings in the Old Testament, certain animals is unclean, and, you know, uh, you know, Christ teaches that all things are pure that God created, you know, so, you know, but I want you to plug in whatever, for me, what I want you to plug in, your party organization or, or, or your, your political, whatever it is. And, and I want us to be especially here uh, in, a, in, a, in a predominantly African-American, you know, uh, church or body of Christ, especially in, in the area of North Houston where we are. You know, I want, I want us to be, be, be very careful uh, with the Black Lives Matter people. I understand most of you are merely just saying, I'm a black person. I shouldn't die unjustly. Get it. Agree. Definitely, you know, that's, that's, that's understood. But, you know, I get, I get it. But the organization for, or, or, or the movement, you know, you know, you understand what that was. You know, that was a movement founded by three homosexual women. And, and in their mission statement, which has recently been taken down, uh, 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 I, I, I was doing some research, and they, like, they don't even have a, a history part. They have a her story part. It's, 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 it's a lot going on there. But, uh, you know, they're in, in favor of the homosexual and the transgender households with, with the person or the purpose of empowering the transgender man. And uh, I'm not making this up. You know, if you want the leaks, contact me. I'll share with you or whatever. But uh, I'm, all I'm saying is be careful of who and what you support what you endorse out here. Back to the scripture. For Paul says, for Paul says, and if you favor these things, whatever, that meat, your party, whatever it is you fight, if you favor this thing, now walkest thou not in charity. That means your walk, your faith is not in love. So don't destroy him with thy meat. 
Don't destroy them with our party. Don't destroy them with your organization. Don't destroy them trying to win an argument, prove a point for whom Christ also died for. The same way that Christ died for them, same way Christ died for you. Let not your good be evil spoken of. Spoken of. For the kingdom of God, it's not meat or drink. It's not black or white. It's not rich or poor. It's not, it's not these things we get caught up down here on earth, but it's a righteousness, a peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Verse, 20, verse 23, whatever is not of faith is sin because God is love. See, proving that point, that's not love. Winning that argument, nah, that's not love. It's a lot of family relationships that need to be mended. You know, but somebody ain't wrong. Somebody won't listen. That's not love. Jesus told us to be accountable. He left us instructions on the way to get right with each other in Matthew 18. You know, when you have an art with our brother. But even before, even before in, in, in Matthew 5 uh, with the Beatitude, Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God, James 1 8. I mean, or 120, I apologize. Let's be better in our hearts, family. Let's be better in our hearts. Jesus told the multitude in Matthew 15, and he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. You need to get their attention. I want you to hear and understand. It's not that which God into the mouth did defile a man, but it's which come up out of the mouth. This defileth the man. Let's be accountable for the things that we say. Matthew 12, Matthew 12, Jesus was teaching them. But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, verse 14, for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good whether it be evil. In Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 11, Ezekiel 11, 5, it says when, a, when, when the Spirit of the Lord told the prophet, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come unto your mind, every one of them. So as I come to the close, I go to our scripture text for this evening. When Paul was teaching the Galatians in chapter 3, starting at verse 23, and this is our good news. This is our good news, family. He says, but before faith, going in verse 23, but before faith was faith. Faith is Jesus, the word of God. John 1, 14, the word became flesh. He said, but before faith came, we were kept under the law. What's the law? The law was this Old Testament. It was the old law, the law of Moses. He said, we were shut up until faith which should be revealed afterwards. See, they didn't have the church back then. That's, that's, that's what the faith brought. The faith brought the word and the word brought the church. He said, we were shut up unto the faith, which should be re well, revealed, afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law, the Old Testament, was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after this faith has come, what's this faith? This doctrine of Christ, this teaching of Christ. We are no longer under the schoolmaster, under that law. For we are all the children of God. That's the title. For we are all the children of God. But how? By faith. By the teaching of Christ. In Christ. And what does the, what is, what is the faith teach us? For as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Remember when Paul was talking about put on these things? See, when you baptize in, you start to put on these teachings, this doctrine, this understanding, this long suffering, this meekness, this compassion. Therefore, is neither Jew or Greek, that's neither bond or free, that's neither male or female, for ye are all one in Christ. No white or black, it's no conservative or liberal, it's, it's no right or left. We are all one in Christ. 
Now, after the lesson of that, you might say, yeah, I can do better. I can be a better man. I can be a better woman. You know, in children, I can be a better child to my parents. You know, I can be I can be more accountable of my actions. So, uh, you might not just like the way things are going right now. You want you you might want to just try to get that relationship, that that that, that development. You know, spiritually with God. You know, you're getting older now. You starting to see things. COVID got over two hundred thousand people that have left this earth. You are seeing things. Stuff starting to weigh on your mind. You know, and I I can agree. Yes, you can. Yes, it is a lot going on. Yes, there seems like it's trouble on the outside. But in order to be more accountable, the way God sees you being accountable, first, you got to hear. What you got to hear, you got to hear this gospel. You got to hear how God loves the world and the people therein so much that he couldn't take it no more. Nah. He's seen that we were a people destroying ourselves, and we needed saving. But in order to get that saving, it took blood. And no one on earth had the blood that can save everyone. So God sent his only son. God sent his only son to dwell amongst men, have the same temptations as men, but live in a righteous way, to be our example. But the people on earth, the people in the world, they didn't like Jesus. They hated him. So they lied on him. They conspired against him. They took him to trial. We see unjust going on even today in America. They took him. They took him to six trials. They whipped him. They beat him. They kicked him and punched him. They couldn't recognize Jesus. And after they couldn't recognize Jesus, after all the beating he took, they marched him up a hill. They took him up a hill called Calvary, and they put the nails in his hands. They throw the nails in his feet. And they let that Jesus hang there and die. Thought they was going to get rid of Jesus. So they took Jesus down. They put him in a tomb. Tried to guard that tomb. But on that third day, Jesus was still able to rise. Rise with all power in his hand. That saving grace from you and me. That saving grace for that sinner you can't stand right now, but you need to have compassion for. And see, what you need to do, you got to believe that gospel. You got to believe God will love you to sacrifice his only son so you can be saved, so your mama can be saved, so your sister can be saved, your nieces and your nephews can be saved. You got to believe that. You got to believe that, that that blood can cover all men, and you can be covered too. Then you turn away from that old life. You repent. You turn away from that life that's not serving God. And you confess. You confess just like that unit did, that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. After that, you can be baptized for the remission of your sins. Clean slate in sight of God. Then, only then, you can be added to the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. And there, and only there, will you be considered a child of God. If you're on this call today, you want to get with the person who invited you to this call, please do so. If you want to reach out to me, uh, you can definitely reach out to me. Uh, my number is 346-221-9555. I definitely love to study with you. Thank you for your time today. As I turn the call back over to Brother Brooks.